AMD did it. They went and strapped their shiny new 3D vCache technology to their most powerful CPU. But does it play as nicely here as it did on the 5800X 3D from last year? Let's find out. In my 2022 year end awards video, I mentioned the letters AMD quite a bit as they took home the trophy for innovation of the year with their 3D vCache technology. Without diving into the minutia, AMD has engineered a solution for packing an extraordinary amount of cache onto the CPU die by stacking it vertically on top of one of the CCXs. As a practical example, here's AMD's newest flagship CPU, the 7950X 3D. Underneath this heat spreader, the CPU package consists of one IO die and two CCXs, which is where the computations actually take place. One of the CCXs is quote unquote normal and exhibits boost behavior similar to what you'd find on a 7950X. The other CCX has the 3D vCache special sauce applied to it and as a result won't boost quite as high, but has significantly better latency. AMD's new chipset driver package will automatically recognize when a game is launched and it will restrict it to run only on the CCX with the 3D vCache and lower latency, thus boosting frame rates. AMD says that this will enable both faster gaming as well as the same performance in other applications that require higher clock speeds as those programs will have access to the secondary CCX that will continue to boost higher. Sounds great, right? But there's gotta be a catch. There's always a catch. Last year, the 5800X 3D kind of took the gaming world by storm, releasing to almost universal acclaim for its gaming prowess but definitely lacking in some other aspects of what enthusiasts generally expect. For one, it was not overclockable. Secondly, it consumed slightly more power than the chip it was based off of, the 5800X. And thirdly, at the time of its launch, the 5800X had been around for over a year and cost about $350, while the X3D retailed for $450. The questions remain, do we run into the same issues here with the 7950X 3D? Well, we still do have that pesky problem of a lack of overclocking support, but I think that as boost algorithms become more advanced and technologies such as PBO are now baked into every motherboard, manual overclocking has become far less important as the CPUs are now kind of doing this for us. Throughout my testing, I never really felt the need to overclock the 7950X 3D. Power consumption and thermals have been a substantial roadblock though for the 7000 series of chips. My 7950X routinely boosts up to 5.7 gigahertz, hitting the 95 Celsius thermal limit and having to throttle down. This is unfortunately the way the chip was designed to run, pushing the limits of power consumption and voltage to achieve the most performance and not stopping until it, hit, it hits a temperature ceiling rather than a clock speed limit. As a result, even during just a normal gaming load, I saw almost runaway thermal scenarios with a 360 millimeter AIO. By contrast, the 7950X 3D runs at a lower power draw and also more reasonable temps. With the same 360 millimeter cooler on both processors, average operating temperature on the X3D was 23 degrees cooler and peak load temperatures were 24 degrees cooler. This is a function of the lower target boost frequency and as a result, a TDP that is a full 50 watts lower than on the 7950X. The last concern is price. The current MSRP of a 7950X is $699. However, since launch, you have regularly been able to find them on sale for less. Right now, you can grab one on Amazon for $589. The X3D is launching tomorrow at $699. So yes, you will be paying a premium here. What do you get for that premium? I put together gaming tests using all the CPUs that at one point or another over the past year have been able to call themselves the fastest gaming CPU in the world, starting with the AM4 5800X 3D, then adding in the Intel i9-13900K, the Ryzen 9 7950X, and then finishing things off, of course, with the 7950X 3D. If you're interested, here are my testing setups for all three platforms used in this video. I tried to keep things as consistent as possible using similar cooling setups, similar motherboards, and similar memory configurations. Although the AM4 platform used 16 gigs of slower DDR4, this is the standard setup for this kind of machine. All the other rigs used the same 32 gig DDR5 memory kit. 
I wanna comment just briefly on the hiccups that I had while testing to try to help out anybody who might be picking up one of these processors at launch. It's not unusual to have to update a motherboard's BIOS when a new CPU comes out for any given socket, so I had to do that on my X670E RS Master. But after doing so and running all of my tests, I was terribly disappointed in my results. I put out the bat signal to fellow short-haired white guy Paul's Hardware, and he helpfully pointed out that I'm an idiot and hadn't done all the necessary steps to ensure that Windows can dynamically address the correct CCX. I'm gonna take 85% of the blame on this one. I simply didn't read all the directions in the reviewer's guide and assumed that I knew how to do this kind of an operation. But I don't take the full L because it's incredibly complicated to get this chip to run right. In addition to the correct BIOS, you have to download and install a new chipset driver, update the Xbox game bar, be on a specific version of Windows, update Ryzen Master, and even run process idle tasks in an administrator command line. I can imagine many scenarios where end users either don't know that they have to do these things or don't know how to do all of these things and as a result might end up not actually seeing the benefits of the 7950X 3D. Let me just pause and interrupt myself really quickly here. I spoke with AMD about all these complications and as it turns out, the only thing that you're going to have to do as an end user is update your BIOS and then install the new chipset driver. All of the other ancillary operations are gonna be taken care of automatically, kind of behind the scenes by Windows itself. So you're not gonna to have to worry about doing as much stuff as I mentioned here in the video. So maybe this is more my fault than I originally thought. So sorry about that. With that being said though, I was able to complete my gaming tests and the 7950X 3D is mightily impressive. I ran all of my tests at 1080p low, which puts as much load as possible on the CPU and sees the least amount of GPU bottleneck. This should show the true disparity in CPU performance during gaming load. However, it's not realistic that you would buy a CPU like this and not at least crank up the settings and more likely just run 1440p or 4K. So the results for these kinds of applications will certainly show a narrower gap but this is just the raw performance of each CPU at the most basic level that you're gonna see on the next charts showing average frame rate. Cyberpunk 2077 kicked things off with a big win for the X3D. It was 34 FPS ahead of the 7950X and 24 FPS ahead of the next closest competitor, the 13900K. For as fast as the 5800X3D is, it gets dusted, unfortunately. Far Cry 6 is our second test, and well, it looks like AMD isn't gonna win all of these as the 13900K scores its first win. The 7950X3D though did put up some serious distance between itself and the non-X3D version, beating the 7950X by 35 frames per second. F122 righted the red ship and saw a return to the top of the chart for the 7950X3D. It was followed by the 13900K, the 7950X, and the 5800X3D bringing up the rear. For a game that runs at such high frame rates, this was still quite a substantial victory at 31 FPS that separated the top two. Guardians of the Galaxy again saw the same running order with the 7950X 3D at the top, but the 13900K was very close at 256 FPS. The 5800X 3D and the 7950X were quite a ways behind. Metro Exodus was a game where I broke my rule of three validation runs because the results here were very different than any of the other tests. The 7950X 3D actually finishes third here, behind the 13900K at the top and the 7950X in second. I ran these tests five total times and these are the right numbers, so it's likely that Metro leans more into clock speed than the other titles. Dirt 5 was kind of another mixed up result as the 7950X scooped its first win, again maybe indicating that some gaming titles prefer higher clocked processors rather than more cash. The 7950X 3D came in second with a 379 FPS average about 9 frames per second behind. Assassin's Creed Valhalla looked more like what I would expect with the 13900K and the 7950X 3D battling it out at the top. This time though, it was the 13900K coming through with the victory at 304 frames per second, but the 301 average of the X3D is functionally about the same. 
Borderlands 3 was the last test that I ran and the 7950X 3D scored a huge win here, allowing the RTX 4090 to really stretch its legs all the way out to 392 frames per second. This was almost 50 FPS more than the second place finisher, the 7950X. Here is the eight game average frame rate with the 7950X 3D topping the charts. In looking back over the individual results, it seemed like when the 7950X 3D was the fastest, it was the fastest by a lot. Whereas even when it lost, it didn't lose by huge margins. This allowed the average of all the games to look like it does here, and the 7950X 3D for now topping the gaming charts overall. So the 7950X 3D is 5% faster than the 13900K, 9% faster than the 7950X, and 22% faster than the 5800X 3D on average in my tests. But there is more to the story, and that's non-gaming applications and general use. I'm not gonna lie, I did do other testing on my CPU suite, but the fact that I had to basically scrap a full day's worth of work to go back and redo everything meant that I didn't have time to properly retest the 7950X 3D on things like encoding, rendering, compression, and code compile. I'm coming in right at the deadline for this one, so that information is unfortunately not gonna be in this video. It's gonna have to wait for a follow-up, and that is my fault. I will refer you to the excellent work done by Paul's Hardware and Gamers Nexus, who likely will include that data in their videos. So am I impressed by the 7950X 3D? Without a doubt, yes, I am. It's pretty amazing that you can now buy a 16 core part that not only has the ability to clock to 5.4 gigahertz, but consumes less power than its rivals and is the best gaming CPU in the world. You can pick up one of these starting tomorrow, and if you were hesitant to jump into AMD's AM5 platform, maybe this will be the final kick in the pants that you need. AMD is also releasing 12 and 8 core versions. The 7900X 3D is also launching tomorrow, and we'll expect the 7800X 3D sometime in April. And I would imagine those will also be pretty awesome performers. So what do you guys think of the 7950X 3D? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to drop a like on the video and hit that subscribe button on your way out. Thanks so much guys for watching and I'll see you next time.